63% of Nigerians' consumers are in worse financial condition. That's according to a senior research manager from NIQ. Welcome to Business Daily. I am Yusuf Akogu. Let's take the business top stories. Glad to have you back. Now we give you update. Of course, a recap of how the stock market went down on Friday. Indeed, the market uh, closed negative on Friday on the floor, 0.65% yeah, in end And of course, the all share index there way above 65,000 basis points. In terms of volume of trade, 459.77 uh, million. And of course, 5.345 billion in terms of value. And of course, 8,051 deals uh, went down on Friday. Quickly, we look at the gainers. Of course, on the gainers chart, we have uh, 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 of course, on the gainers chart, we have uh, the likes of Abbey Bread, Omatex, and of course, uh, move on to the losers, of course, indeed. Uh, the market, the losers, we have the Guinness, Shams, and of course, John Hort, all, all uh, losing 10% as well. Uh, uh, as Shams also losing as well as 10% as well. Why John Hort uh, close negative as well, 9.84% to close at 2 naira and 20. Cobo, we look at the top traded equities uh, for the day. Of, of UBA, United Bank for Africa, 57.6 million volume of shares he traded. And of course, uh, Joe uh, Japo Gold and Ventures, also 48.1 million, uh, uh, million volume of shares. And of course, Access Bank doing 44.2 million volume of shares. Then we look at the performance in terms of sector, of course. Or most mostly in uh, negative territory, the banking sector down 1.26 percent. Of course, uh, the consumer goods also down there 1.27, and of course, the insurance sector the biggest loser for the day 1.83 percent. The only uh, sector in green, not so uh, much in terms of gain, is a. Uh, oil and gas sector. Of course, the rest of Africa, BSE in Botswana, closed strong 0.06%. Uh, and of course, in Nairobi, Kenya, the market uh, closed uh, downward there, 1.91%. And of course, in Ghana here, 1.26% uh, uh, positive. It ended on Friday. Of course, the trading is on as usual. and will give you updates of everything that will happen today across the continent of Africa. Quickly, we take a, a break. When we return, we'll go into our discussion. Don't go away.
glad to have you back it's still business daily right here on trust television now we're going into our discussion and today we are looking at the nigeria automobile sector what are the potentials in this industry how can nigeria uh made vehicle be i mean be more uh having them more on the on our roads and i have joining me in the studio show someone who should know a very famous individual dr jelani aliyo he's the director general national automotive design and development council glad to have you on business daily my pleasure. Yeah, it's an honor yes. for us to have you here. Same here. Yes, yeah. I must congratulate you on your award two days ago by the Nigeria uh, in diaspora. How does it feel to be honored by your country? It's, uh, it's a great honor. It's a great honor uh, mm. to uh, have such uh, recognition mm. from one's uh, own country. Mm. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I I indeed, I must congratulate you. Let's mm. go into the discussion now. You recently run, uh, launched uh, a development plan for e uh, v, that's electric vehicle, and of course, it's CNG as well. Can you mm. talk to us more about it? Yes. Uh, well, the, the journey actually for us, NADDC, in vehicle electrification started a couple of years ago. Uh, and uh, as we all know, uh, Nigeria was a signatory to the Paris Accord uh, of Absolutely. 2015 Absolutely. on the mitigation of greenhouse gases. Mm. And again, uh, the country committed to net zero by 2060. So we've always believed that the best uh, and most effective uh, strategy to achieve uh, those targets would be to go uh, with zero emission vehicles, electric vehicles powered mm. by electricity and batteries. Mm. Uh, so the electric vehicle development plan uh, is a set of uh, 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 fiscal and non-fiscal incentives and other programs to promote and really expedite the production uh, and usage of electric vehicles in Nigeria so that we can really meet those targets and as we can see now really uh, uh, provide a very uh, a viable solution to uh, the higher cost of fuel. Hmm. Now, indeed, uh, this plan has actually been there, but with the removal of subsidy, there seems to be more attention. I mean, people trying to move away from the, uh, the uh, IC vehicle to now electric vehicle. How does it make your work easy? Well, we've got a whole lot more work to do now <laughs> because the, the whole nation, I believe, uh, needs these solutions that we have been promoting. Mm. Uh, we had an opportunity to present in front of NEC, National Economic Council, a couple of weeks ago on uh, vehicle electrification, how far it has come in Nigeria mm. and what we need to do to take it even further. Mm. And uh, it was really very much received uh, uh, and uh, we're getting all the necessary support that we need uh, to really go even faster uh, on, on such programs. Mm. Now, indeed, I was uh, wondering initially, where does the vision come from? I know you are famous for designing uh, ve uh, vehicles and all of that. Where does this uh, vision comes from? Well, personally, uh, I've always been very uh, uh, impressed and very uh, fascinated with uh, the environment. Mm. And as we know, Africa is an incredible continent. Uh, you go to East Africa, uh, uh, the Serengeti, the Ngorongoro, magnificent habitats where for millions of years, uh, both flora and fauna have existed mm. in a perfectly choreographed dance of life. Uh, and then the people of Africa themselves, incredible her heritage and histories. Mm. Uh, but a lot of things must happen for the African uh, 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 people. Mm. Uh, and the only way to do that is through uh, a massive industrialization. But you can't afford to power that industrialization using fossil fuel. Mm. So there must be a balance. Uh, uplift Indeed. the lives of people, mm. do it in a sustainable manner, mm. and electric vehicles and other renewable powered solutions come into play. Mm. You talked about the Paris uh, Agreement of 2015. Mm. Uh, Nigeria is a signatory to it. Mm. Uh, to what extent, in terms of investment, mm. as Nigeria uh, bringing in to mm. ensure that uh, this uh, EMV, EV, rather, mm. and of course the CNG uh, mm. vehicle comes into a reality? Well, I'll, I'll touch more on my sector, the automotive sector, uh, although you know even uh, generally uh, there has been a lot of uh, uh, momentum in renewable energy, mm. uh, solar energy and other sources, uh, both by government and other private entities. And then we, uh, NADDC, with our focus on the production of vehicles, we have been promoting that. Mm. And that is why, as you know, we have at least two companies, automotive, uh, that are producing uh, electric vehicles, Hyundai Nigeria mm. and Jet Motors. And then also on the motorcycle side, uh, you also have a Max-E, 
uh, and other companies that are producing uh, electric uh, uh, mobility. Mm -hmm. uh, so the journey has started and we will continue to push, to push that. Mm -hmm. Also on the infrastructure side, uh, we have developed 100% solar powered electric vehicle charging stations to prove, not just to prove that the concept works, uh, but to see how it can be scaled up. And mm -hmm. we position at least the first three at universities to engage young Nigerians and have them even come up with better solutions. Mm. You know, that, that is interesting. I understand you also have like three uh, charging stations in Soko one in Sokoto and Sukarno, of course, in Lagos, yes. uh, as the case may be. Then what are the challenges? We Nigeria is a country where we still have an epilepsy power supply. Mm. What is the relation? Now, many Nigerians want to know, are we really at that point where we can actually mm. manage electric vehicles? I believe we are for a number of reasons. Uh, number one, uh, like I mentioned, there are uh, a lot of efforts by government and even more now mm. to be able to provide a renewable energy across the country. Mm. Uh, so that will provide a source for powering these electric vehicles. Mm. And then we on our own, like I had mentioned, had really done quite a bit of research and strategized and developed solar powered electric vehicle charging stations, meaning that even in the middle of nowhere or even in the middle of a city with no grid connection, you can power electric vehicles. Uh, so this is where we are. And we, I believe that uh, the electric challenges will be a thing of the past because there is renewed commitment and hope uh, across the board to really bring out these types of solutions that are beneficial for uh, the mm. citizens. Mm. Uh, indeed, let's look at the cost now of acquiring, of owning an electric vehicle. Uh, it's capital intensive. It's not for ordinary Nigerians. How? <laughs> talk to us about the cost. Yes. Well, uh, with any product, that is the initial cost, the money that you lay out when you pick that thing up from the dealer or the supplier. Mm. And then there's the total cost of ownership. That is, you add up all the money you'd spend mm. during the lifetime of that product. Mm. Uh, so when you compare it side by side, yes. Uh, for example, let's say a 14-seater uh, electric bus, uh, like the one that Jet, Jet Motors uh, produces. Uh, the, the EV vehicle will be more expensive than the petrol powered vehicle, uh, but uh, let's say you take a, a period of about uh, maybe seven years of using that vehicle as a commercial uh, mm -hmm. transport uh, vehicle, and uh, each, uh, uh, each day you run about 400 uh, kilometers. Uh, by the end of those seven years, uh, you would save by not using petrol, you'd save over 100 million naira on that one vehicle. Mm. So the total cost of ownership on EVs is a whole lot less. Yes, you pay more when you buy that vehicle, and then there's no headache of taking it to the uh, mechanics for, to fix this, to fix that, because all those things that can go wrong in a typical petrol-powered vehicle don't exist in an EV. No crankshafts, no plugs, no oil change. Mm. So it's a much, much more cost-effective user uh, experience. Mm. Uh, indeed. What about the cost of charging? If you, if you charge your vehicle, how, how much does it cost one to charge an electric vehicle? Yes, so it'll cost a whole lot, lot less because electricity uh, per unit uh, uh, in terms of, let's say, those 400 kilometers I had mentioned, uh, the amount of money you'd pay for fuel to travel those 400 kilometers for those seven years and then you compare that to the cost of electricity for the same distance, that's where you'll be saving that over 100 million naira in the course of uh, seven years. So it's a much more cost-effective uh, solution. Now, apart from uh, going to the charging stations, the one that uh, uh, your agency established to charge, can an individual have a, have a charging station in his house? That's the beauty of these electric vehicles. You know, there, there are two things in one package. They are really highly advanced and are very simple to own and use. Uh, the, the Hyundai Kona uh, that is also assembled in Nigeria, uh, a vehicle like that, even the jet mover, can be charged at home. All you need is a 13 amp, 230, 240 volt outlet, and you can charge those vehicles. Yes, it takes a little bit longer than going to a dedicated charging station, but that level uh, of charging can be achieved at home, so it really makes it very user-friendly to own any one of these vehicles. Uh, interesting there. Let's look at the, the manufacturing. Uh, is it 100% local manufactured? That's a very interesting question. Uh, and an example and analogy I always love to give is, let's say the proverbial American car, the Chevrolet, right? Mm. Made in America, Chevrolet. Uh, even Chevrolets have parts 
and components coming from all over the world, South Korea, China, mm. Brazil, and other places. Mm. So no longer does any one company anywhere in the world, no matter how advanced that country is, produce all that it needs to make a vehicle. 100%. They get supplies, okay. yes. Okay. They get component supplies mm. from around the world. Mm. And that is the type of uh, ecosystem that our manufacturers are plugging into to be part of the global uh, component uh, uh, value chain. No, that's interesting. What about in terms of partnership? We have some vehicle manufacturers in Nigeria, like the Innocence, for example. Mm. Uh, are you going into any partnership with some of these uh, uh, manufacturers? I think it goes, in partnership. <laughs> <laughs> it goes beyond partnership uh, with these companies, uh, Innoson, uh, Jetmover, Hyundai Nigeria, uh, Meccano, I have Nord, uh, Larry Shitu. Mm. It goes beyond partnership. Mm. Uh, we, we work very closely together. Uh, we support them 100 mm. percent. And I believe that is why the sector has really achieved uh, uh, what it has. Mm. As you know, uh, in Nigeria, uh, these companies uh, have a combined production capacity of over 400,000 vehicles per year mm. uh, that they can produce 400,000 vehicles per annum. So we're working very closely with them and with other stakeholders, both within and outside the country, to enable these companies to really uh, produce uh, as much as uh, uh, they are set up to be able to do. Indeed. Now let's look at the impact now on the larger economy. Mm. Uh, manufacturing cars. How has this helped in a way maybe create jobs and uh, uh, I mean contribute l uh, largely to the economy? Yes. In many places, you know, uh, the US, Germany, South Africa, the automotive sector, India, and now China very much too, mm -hmm. uh, the automotive sector really contributes to job creation, to the transfer of technology, and also to coming up with solutions that sort of trickle down into other sectors. Uh, so we're working towards creating at least uh, immediately one million jobs in the automotive sector uh, based on the 2023 NAIDP. Mm -hmm. And uh, this would be both direct and indirect. And that's just to start, like I said, is very connected and there'll be additional jobs created within the economy. Mm -hmm. So the automotive sector really has that ability to really uh, advance uh, the, uh, uh, and expedite the development of Nigeria's economy. Now, indeed, but uh, the awareness is still very, very low. Mm -hmm. What are you doing in that regard? Yes, it is. And uh, we're working hard on that. Uh, and forums such as this, these programs really help a lot. And uh, we're also on our own doing programs to promote the usage of uh, clean energy type vehicles. Um, and one thing to really understand is advanced technology is not just for advanced countries. Uh, Nigeria can really benefit on mm. super advanced technology to really uh, reach down and touch the lives of each, uh, each and every man, woman and child in, in the country. Mm. And uh, you know, cell phones, we all use cell phones. Uh, they are advanced technology. Before that, we had landlines, and very few people had landlines, only the very rich or offices. Now, everybody can afford a cell phone and communicate. Mm. We hope that that sort of transition, that so sort of uh, technological ev revolution mm. is what electric vehicles will bring to Nigeria. Mm. Now, indeed. Now, now, if you go to many nigerian cities many of our roads most of the vehicles you see are imported vehicles mm -hmm. toyota uh, mercedes honda and a whole lot of them you see many of them none of them are actually produced here but with the uh, the coming of the electric vehicle which uh, will be manufacturing from here or assembled here in nigeria would this in any way reduce our importation of vehicles Yes, th foreign vehicles. Th that is a strategy because mm. the plan really calls for drastic uh, 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 reduction in the importation of vehicles. And we're not even, even with EVs, we're not encouraging the importation of used EVs. Mm. We're encouraging uh, if it does have to be imported, it needs to be new. Uh, and then uh, a whole lot of incentives to produce those vehicles in the country. Mm. So as, as we move forward, as we transition, uh, we hope there'll be less and less vehicles brought into the country. Country, more produced locally and then also create that capability to actually come up with those vehicles from within the country which we have already started uh, doing we have the design of a vehicle that is going to be in tune with Nigeria and uh, we have the design locked uh, so we're now working towards the engineering development mm. we hope that such a vehicle uh, after we produce a fully functional prototype mm. could be taken by the private sector and then mass produce what, what, what about the durability of these vehicles Yes, yes. 
That's another very interesting question. Uh, electric vehicles are actually a whole lot more durable than petrol powered vehicles. You know, when you have a car, uh, today this component goes wrong, you take it to the mechanic, he replaces it or he fixes it, tomorrow something else goes wrong mm. because of the thousands of parts in a petrol engine. Well, with an electric motor, there are very, very few parts. So the less you have, the less will go wrong. Mm. So you could potentially drive those vehicles for hundreds of thousands of kilometers with virtually nothing uh, going wrong. Mm. So again, back to the total cost of ownership, you spend very, very little, if at all, on maintaining or servicing that vehicle, and then you, you pay very little in power in it. And then these vehicles, you know, before they go on the road, they're tested in, in Arctic conditions, in deserts, in extreme weather conditions, mm -hmm. to ensure that, yes, they can take all that abuse. And these vehicles, especially the ones produced and assembled in Nigeria, have extra engineering into them to be able to cope with the extreme road, mm -hmm heat, dust, and other climatic conditions. Mm, but, uh, interesting. In terms of maintenance now, do you, really, do you need special engineers for it? Or what we call in Nigeria, uh, the mechanics that we have. Do you need special engineers for electric vehicles? Yes, yes you will to a degree because the system is different. The components of the EV that are the same, the suspension, you know, the brakes, and the, some of the coolants. So the regular mechanic can, can, can ma manage it? No. No, no, not the whole vehicle. And that is why we're working towards, you know, uh, uh, training Nigerians to be able to mm. fix electric vehicles. And we hope to use all or any one of the 21 uh, automotive training centers that we have built across the country to do this, mm. to take that technology right to the footsteps of our local communities. Yeah, the interesting there as we uh, try, uh, uh, I mean, uh, let's, let's look at uh, CNG now. Mm -hmm. So we try to wrap up the program. Now, it's another option that uh, Nigeria are considering. Mm -hmm. What is your agency doing with regard to this? A lot. Uh, the CNG journey for us also started a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And as we speak, we have at least two companies that are producing CNG-powered vehicles in Nigeria. We have Enerson Vehicle Manufacturing and we have Omar. Mm -hmm. uh, both companies are out in Anambra in, uh, in Newi. Uh, as we speak, there are vehicles underground. Uh, on the ground mm. that uh, are, are CNG powered. And these vehicles can immediately uh, add value to lessening the uh, challenges that people face uh, mm. in, in transportation. Mm. Uh, indeed. Uh, uh, recently, with the removal of first subsidy, so many uh, people uh, were thinking of converting. In fact, some are already converting their vehicle to CNG. Mm. Uh, but again, the locations or the, the infrastructure to do this are not mm -hmm. really readily available in some mm -hmm. places, some mm -hmm. locations. Maybe in Abuja and Lagos, maybe you may get one or two. Mm -hmm. But in places like, uh, let's say, Kaduna, Enugu, and other places, mm -hmm. what infrastructure do you think need to be put in place to make this conversion very easy? Yes, well, now the vehicles are available. Uh, and we'll continue to work with close and the relative uh, uh, agencies and government entities to expand uh, that uh, ecosystem for, mm -hmm. for CNG uh, provision. Um, we are also training uh, on conversion. Uh, so we're working with uh, sectoral experts to be able to provide uh, the necessary uh, expertise in converting mm -hmm. vehicles from petrol or diesel to a CNG. But I'd like to point out that it is very important uh, that when you go out to convert your vehicle, you only do it at government approved workshops and locations. Because mm. this type of conversion has to be done the right way. Mm. There's no room for error. Mm. So make sure that whoever is doing that conversion for you, mm. whether it's your personal vehicle mm. or uh, an official vehicle or company vehicle, it is done by a government approved uh, uh, company that is, has the, the, the right mm. expertise to be able to do that safely. Mm. Now, as we, uh, just in 30 seconds now, do you think uh, the ICE vehicle will go into extinction very soon? I believe it, it will. <laughs> I believe it will. <laughs> All right. I must thank you, sir. Dr. Jelani Aliyu, Director General, National Automotive Design and Development Council. I must thank you for your time on Business Daily. We appreciate your contribution. My pleasure. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. Then with that is a wrap on Business Daily today. Join us tomorrow for more. I am Yusuf Akogun.